One of the best ways to give clarity to any story is by recording a voiceover narration. But I'm guessing you already knew that because you clicked on this video. So today, let's jump straight into it and learn how to use the Fairlight page in DaVinci Resolve 17 to turn your written words into waveforms. So there's two quick setup things I got to show you. First, make sure that your computer knows that it's listening to the microphone that you have. And the quickest way to do this, if you don't already know, because you've done so many Zoom calls this year, is you go up to the little speaker icon and hold down the option key on your keyboard. This lets you actually see the inputs on a Mac, at least, of what's what it's listening to. This little blue thing saying it's seeing this Focusrite uh, Scarlett Solo USB interface which is what I'm talking through right here and what you're hearing. Uh, this is the Rode Pod mic that I'm using, and it's also connected to a CloudLifter CL1 to boost the, the gain a little bit. Now, another setup thing you want to do is make sure you understand where you're actually writing your voiceover files to on your hard drive. And to find that, you go down to this little project settings uh, cog that's down here in the lower right. You click that, and then you can go over to capture and playback. It's on the left side there and then down to capture and save clips to this section right here. This is basically telling you where it's going to be creating those files. If you choose browse, then you can choose, uh, you know, your project folder tree is what I suggest you do. If you have a structure that's built specifically for each individual project, um, we've got assets, audio, and then VO is where I'm going to be placing this. So that way I know if I move this whole folder bundle and I open on another pro, you know, another computer, it's not going to, you know, realize, oh, my voiceover files were stuck on another computer somewhere else. It's going to keep everything with it, which is super handy. So we'll click OK. We'll hit Cancel right here. And we needed a timeline to actually record our voiceover to. If you don't see the media pool, you can just check this button right here. That'll pop in and out real quick for you. Let's create a timeline by right clicking. Say Timeline, Create New Timeline, or it's Command N is a good way to do that. We'll call it VO. And the audio track type we want to be using instead of stereo is actually mono for voiceover. Um, we're going to be recording a single mic, single voice, it's mono. Click create. And we also, while we got that created, why don't we create a bin over here for organization within the project. So when this gets big, we can find where all our VO clips are. We're going to say new bin and we'll call that VO as well. And while we're renaming everything, let's also rename the track. You can rename tracks. So once you have a, a timeline that has lots of different audio tracks, uh, you know where your voiceover is. So we're going to click right here and then click one more time. And by doing that, we can type in you know, voiceover, something like that. So that way we know where we're patching to, which is going to be the next step. Um, the other thing I want to point out, if you want to see your tracks larger, just hold down shift on the keyboard and your scroll mouse will let you make that nice and big, which is kind of a little handy trick. And the other thing I want to do is select the bin. So if I select the voiceover bin, when I'm recording, it's automatically going to be putting the clips into the one that's selected over here in the media pool. So that's another little, little tip there. Now we need to get everything patched and then we can start recording. There's two ways to get to patching your microphone into this track. And the first one is going to be if you go up to Fairlight and then you go to Patch Input Output. Okay. Under here, you get this confusing window, um, but it's, it's not actually all that bad. What we have on the left is source. So that's our microphone, right? So we've got an audio input, which is, which is our source. We're going to choose, I know the Scarlet Solo has has two inputs. We're going to use the left one because that's the one I'm using. And then the destination, this is where renaming the audio tracks comes in handy. We're going to choose, instead of audio outputs, we're going to be choosing a track input. So we only have one track right now. It's that one we renamed to voiceover. So you select that, and then now that you can see that's highlighted, we hit patch, and now... The microphone is talking directly to that track. So what that's basically saying, as soon as we go in arm and record, it's going to be taking this source right here that we're listening to. So we can hit X, and I just want to show you the other way to do that that maybe is quicker for some people rather than going up to the Fairlight menu, is if you have your mixer open, and the way you open your mixer is by clicking this button right here, and then over on the right side, you have an input section, right? So this basically shows us what's patched, and we've already patched it. But if you click into this section right here and say input, now this takes us to that same window that we were just at. So you could you could do either way. Um, I tend to like going to the mixer, but I want to show you where it was in the menu as well. So to meet your timeline, I just go up here to the top. There's a little speaker guy right here. If you click this, this is going to make sure that there's no sound that's playing back out of your speakers, which is important because you don't want your speakers interfering with your recording of your voice that's coming into the microphone. So we've muted the output by doing that. And now we need to arm the track. Arming the track just basically means it's it's getting itself ready to be recorded. 
And a couple ways to do that is, well, one, if we have the mixer open, there is a little R right here. This is not going to record it. It's going to arm it. So the R, now we can see it's hot. We can actually see my microphone levels coming into there, which is great. The other way, there's another one of these instead of doing it through the mixer is you can choose. So let me unarm it by unselecting it. You can choose it over here in the track header as well. And look at that. It says arm for record, which is uh, super helpful. Now that we've got it all armed, all you need to do is hit the record button and take your amazing voiceover that you've written down and start recording. Um, the other thing I'll point out as before we do this uh, is these little meters here are really helpful for knowing where to set your levels. Because I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett, the gain is set on a little dial that's that's on there. And this is perfect right now. What this is telling us is that we're in the yellow range. And yellow is kind of where you want to keep your voice. You don't want that really in the red. Uh, if it's in the red, you turn it down. If it's only in the green, turn it up a little bit. So this is a good, healthy gain staging for our voiceover. Um, let's hit record. And I'm going to record some voiceover from one of the best movie trailers ever created. So there's the record button right there I just hit. And you can see it's rolling. It's recording. We're getting some, some uh, words there, some waveforms going for us. And here we go. Let's give this a shot. In a world where professional sports had sunk to a new low, two guys invented a game that took them to the big time. Okay, and now that we're done, we can hit stop. And just like that, you can see we have uh, some waveforms from our words. Now that we're done recording, we can unarm it by hitting that button right there, and then also unmute it by going back up to the top there, and we should be able to hear what we uh, just laid down. In a world where professional sports had sunk to a new low, two guys invented a game that took them to the big time. So there we go, we've got voiceover recorded. You can even check where that got saved to on your hard drive if you right click on it in the bin and go reveal in Finder. And this will take you right to where the actual file is. I created a 24-bit WAV file. It says FL for Fairlight Capture with the date and all that, and it'll keep making unique names as it goes. So that's how you can send it to someone else. But I want you to stick around because I've actually got a couple other cool tips about recording multiple takes and editing. So, so <laughs> we're not quite done yet. Hey, I want to interrupt real quick and welcome you if you're new and also say hi and thank you if you're back again. You're awesome. Uh, my name is Chadwick and this is Creative Video Tips, which is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. So if you're into that, subscribe right down below right now so you don't miss out on any new free tips. Now with that out of the way, let's look back at the Fairlight and edit pages uh, to learn a new cool bonus tip about using layers for managing different takes that's all within a single audio track. It's super cool. Awesome, you stuck around for the bonus tip. This one might blow your mind. To make things easier to see, we're gonna right click on the clip and say clip color, change this to teal, and let's record another take of that amazing voiceover. So I've muted the output, I've armed the track, and we'll hit record. In a world where professional sports had sunk to a new low, two guys invented a game that took them to the big time. Okay, I'll hit stop, and let's change the color of this one as well. Right-click on it, we'll say clip color, and make that yellow. Now you can see right here, this is kind of sketchy, right? Uh, let's also, let's get rid of the armed track and enable our um, output so we can actually hear. In a world where professional sports had sunk to a new low, no. Okay, this looks trippy, right? We've got yellow on top of blue, and it's all on the same track. Well, this is because it, by default, it's going to start layering all these takes on top of each other. It doesn't overwrite what you had previously recorded. It doesn't delete that footage, which is good. Um, and it also helps you stay really organized with all your tracks as you go. Now, to see everything a little bit more easily here on the Fairlight page, you can go under, uh, it's under the View menu, and scroll down to the near the bottom and say Show Audio Track Layers. Just like that, you can see the different layers of the different takes that we have here. So this is really handy because we can change the order of them when they're in this mode. Or Basically, whatever's on top is what you're going to hear. If it's on bottom, you don't hear it at all. It's like a full 100% opacity difference. So if I play right now, in a world, we're just hearing yellow. But if I click and drag this above it like that, well, that didn't work. If I click and drag this above it like that, I had to go a little higher. Now we'll be able to hear only the blue take in a world. Okay, it sounded similar, but you get the idea. That was the blue take. 
And um, the other thing that you can do with layered audio that's handy is you can click and drag these on top of each other. And you can see these little phantom marks. So if you need to march up, match up uh, one section of a take with another, you can do that really easily because you can kind of see through on top of them. Now I want to show you in the edit page how you can edit with this um, because there's a couple different options there that's a little bit different. Now, so if you take a look over in the edit page, we've kind of got the same thing. There's there's the two VO tracks. I can slide this over here and work with it that way. Um, however, if I drag this over to another clip after I've you know sort of released it and drag it there, and now I pull it back, you can see, look what just happened. I've sort of lost that. It has overwritten the tail of that. In fact, if I could do it again, let me show you one more time. And now I've released the mouse and I drag back it looks like we've actually trimmed that away. And that's because we don't have the layered uh, trimming enabled. So the way you can do that, let's un hit undo a couple times. So we'll pull that audio back. It's not actually deleted from disk, it's just deleted from our timeline. But the way we can avoid that is if we go under timeline and choose layered audio editing. What layered audio editing does under the timeline menu right there is now, anytime I move this over it, it's basically as it's non-destructive. It's not going to be trimming away pieces of it as I let go of the mouse. So you can see if I drag this over here and let go, I can still pull it back because everything is retained. So having that layered audio editing on like that, it's really, it's kind of basically like having view, um, show audio track layers on and, and working all the time because you can see if I drag this over here to the right now everything bumps out of the way. So now you not only know the basics to recording VO right inside Resolve 17 but even a few little editing tricks using layered audio and I gotta be honest I didn't even know about layered audio until not all that long ago but it's so cool that I had to share it this week. If you learned a little nugget of knowledge today please give the video a like to help it reach more people and if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve check out the playlist it should be somewhere up on screen right now and because there's so much more to learn I'll see you in that next video.